Life. There's just so much to do. I'm far too busy as a minister to stop and take a break. Is vacation really necessary? How do I avoid taking work with me wherever I go? What are some good boundaries to set during my time away? These are the questions that Daniel will take on in today's episode of Minister's Minute, an installment of the Everyday Ministry Podcast for ministers with shorter attention spans. This is James White, one of the co-hosts at the Everyday Ministry Podcast, and I'm sitting here with Daniel Brown, the youth pastor at Calera Baptist Church in Calera, Alabama. And on this episode, we're going to be looking at the idea of vacations as a pastor. Now, just to kind of preface it before Daniel answers this, that when we speak of pastor, we don't necessarily mean the senior pastor or the lead pastor of anything of that nature. We just mean someone in the pastorate. It could be youth, children, worship. It it could be bivocational. It could be full-time. It could be part-time, whatever the case may be. So, Daniel, as we transition into the question itself, my first thought is, why is vacations necessary in the pastorate? Well, uh, just to kind of give our, our listeners a quick preface to second yours, James and I just got through having a, a great conversation about this that kind of helped us to know that, hey, we need to talk about this with our listeners as well. So to answer your question there, why is vacation necessary in ministry? Number one is just to simply remember, because I know that if I'm going on vacation, I'm going with my family, with my wife and my children. We might go with some friends, but I know for sure that my family is going to be there. So when I go on vacation and I go with the most important people in my life, then I am being reminded during that time that these are indeed the most important people in my life. And these are the ones I need to be loving on, ministering to, and spending time with above all else. So taking the time to go on vacation helps me to unplug from the things back home that may be important, but they're still secondary. And it helps me to be fully invested with no distractions in my family for that time that we're on vacation. So that's why I would say in ministry, that is the most important thing because it is easy to be sidetracked, distracted, focused on other things, however you want to put that when we're home. But going on vacation gives us opportunity to fully focus on the people that matter the absolute most in our lives. I think you rightly said that it's so easy for us to be sidetracked at home as pastors when we spend time with our family or even when we have friends over and things of the such. And how do we prevent from carrying that over into the vacation? Because we do live in a world of technology where we yeah. carry a cell phone with us. I mean, if you're like me, you have an Apple Watch, so you get every notification on your wrist. You have laptops, iPads. So how do you prevent carrying that over into the vacation itself? Well, I think first off, to answer that question accurately, we have to all admit that that doesn't happen on accident. The only way that I truly go on vacation and fully unplug from what's going on back home is for me to intentionally choose that that will happen. And so that means that I'm going to tell people ahead of time, hey, I'm on vacation this week. I need you to take care of whatever's going on back home. Or, you know, telling other people on your staff, if you're you're on a church staff, hey, I'm going to be gone this week, letting them know ahead of time, telling people on your leadership team, like I, as a youth leader, I have people on my leadership team who are, you know, weekly communicating with students, letting them know up front, hey, unless there is an absolute emergency, I need you to just get it handled, do the best you can, figure out however you can make it work and get things taken care of while I'm gone. But even if you try to reach out to me, unless it's an emergency, I'm not going to answer. So there's intentionality in preparing for the vacation to make sure that I don't take work with me. But then on top of that, you know, maybe you're going on a longer vacation, five, six days. That's that's long to me. You decide up front, like, and you tell your spouse, hey, for the first two, three, four days, however long, I am intentionally committing to you that I am not going to do any work whatsoever while we're on vacation. Now, for me personally, James, while I'm on vacation, that's a great time for me to clear my head and to really think clearly about some things that are going on back home that I need to be prepared to, to jump on top of when I get back in the saddle. So I like to take the last couple of days of my vacations to really clear my head and think specifically about those things. It's a great time for me to strategize. So I am going to do some work while I'm there, but I'm going to be intentional to take the first two or three days while I'm on vacation to tell my wife, tell my kids, tell my boss, whoever, 
that I am fully focused on family for X amount of time while I'm on that vacation. Another thing that I would say, James, that doesn't necessarily answer your question, but I think is a great practice for us to do is when you go on vacation, take a good book, take Mm -hmm. a book that you're going to be able to dive into. Maybe it's a quick read. Maybe it's something you've had on your, your wish list for a long time, but take a book with you. That's going to challenge you to think outside of the things that you're focusing on in the everyday life back home. So maybe back home, you're focusing all the time on discipleship. Take a book that's focused on evangelism. Maybe you enjoy reading fiction, but you don't ever find time to read fiction back home. Take a fictional book with you. Maybe you like autobiographies or biographies. Take one of those with you and read something like that while you're gone. But getting yourself focused on and invested in something else outside of just what goes on back home with work is a great way to help you, for lack of a better term, be distracted from the things back home so that you're not so quick to jump back into that business or, or, or ministry mindset when you while you are home. You gave some parameters of you know communicating with the staff back at the church or communicating with your spouse or your children to really designate the first portion of the, the vacation to just family time unless emergency arose. I wouldn't want to just ask you, is there any barriers that you put up w- regarding your cell phone or laptop or iPad or or even like you were just mentioning, maybe even books or anything like that that you put into place on those first four days or three days, however long the vacation length is? Yeah, I mean, I still have my phone with me. I know some guys who they'll, they'll tell you like, hey, man, I'm, I'm not going to have my phone. So if you need to get a hold of me, you better have some special way of communication because I'm not going to have my phone. That I, I don't typically do that. There are times where I'll leave my phone in the room or something of that nature while we go out to the beach or go to dinner. But for the most part, I just try to be intentional just to say like to decide and, and to exercise a little bit of, of wisdom. If I see a certain person calling me and I know why they're calling me, then I'm just going to let it go to voicemail or I receive a text message that I know that's a text message that's going to be talking about work or talking about ministry or talking about a certain student of mine. I'm just going to wait to respond to that text message and I'll, I'll, you know, be polite and let them know, Hey, I'll get back with you in a couple of days or something of that nature. But as far as, as turning my phone off, I don't typically do that. If you feel led to do that, if you think that that's what you need in order to, to be fully invested in your family, man, turn the phone off. But I don't necessarily think that the phone gets in my way. And, And if my wife ever said, Hey, I disagree with you. I think it does. I would turn my phone off and I would leave it, but she hasn't ever to this point, shared with me that she thinks that that has been an issue. So use discretion, use discretion, be, be sensitive to the needs of your family and to your own tendencies as well. Yeah. I've heard of some men that actually leave their phone back at home and let the church know, or the, the, the pastor or other leadership of the church know that if they need to be contacted to contact the wife instead of them. Right. And the purpose of that is because generally they're not going to call the wife over a small, minute issue in the church. Right. They're only going to call and contact them on their vacation yep. if it is a, an emergency. So, Yeah, that's a good thing you could do. Absolutely. I think that's a good idea. We're going to end the podcast with the Daniel just summing up everything he said in a few little bullet points for us. But before we get into that final summation of the podcast itself, I want to take a short break to listen to one of the commercials from the Christian podcast community. Are you just watching? Do you enjoy watching movies? The special effects, the interesting characters, the great stories. There's a lot to enjoy that comes out of Hollywood. But sometimes it's best to approach secular media with a healthy dose of critical thinking. Join me, E. Franklin, and Tim Martin, as we discuss our favorite movies and share critical thinking for the entertained Christian. So visit areyoujustwatching.com to subscribe. And don't just watch. To, uh, just to sum up this episode of Minister's Minute, we talked about vacationing as a passion while it's important. So why is vacation necessary? The main reason it's necessary is because you're going to go on vacation with the people that matter most. And therefore, you need to be intentional to invest in those people when you're on vacation. It's also necessary. I didn't mention this earlier, but I will add this now. Vacation is necessary so that you can be refreshed. God works us and and works through us like crazy when we're home in ministry. So it's important that we are refreshed and we are fully focused when we are home, which means we need to be fully focused on our family and on ourselves when we're on vacation. How do we prevent 
ourselves from carrying work with us on vacation. You set boundaries, you communicate with people around you, including your spouse and your staff, and then you exercise some discipline, just like using setting boundaries with your cell phone, setting boundaries with how many days you're going to be fully focused on family and only family, things of that nature, but setting healthy boundaries and then exercising discipline. And then, and the other thing I would say is, you know, take a good book with you. A book can help you to unplug from the things going on back home. It can, in a healthy way, distract you from from the things that are taking place back at work. And then on top of that, it can help your creative mind to be working and thinking through some things that maybe you need some help with when you are back home. And then on top of that, just just spend that time with family. That matters above all else. Spending that time with family and being refreshed and letting them know that they are the most important people in your life. Well, Daniel, thank you again for answering your question for us here on the Minister's Minute. And for the listeners out there, we hope that this has been beneficial for you as you seek to glorify God in all that you do in your position as a church. Hey, before we wrap this episode up, I just wanted y'all to know that if you want to ask a question or make a statement or just tell me I'm an idiot, you can send us an email at everydayministrypodcast at gmail.com. That's everydayministrypodcast at gmail.com. We look forward to interacting with you guys. We'd like to thank you for listening to today's episode of Minister's Minute, our on-the-go podcast released every second and fourth Monday of the month in which we seek to answer a specific question related to everyday ministry. Additionally, be sure to catch our full-length episodes that release every first and third Monday of the month, in which our co-hosts come together to discuss beneficial topics on doctrines and practices for the everyday minister. If you enjoyed today's episode, we encourage you to subscribe and rate the podcast through the podcast catcher of your choice. We can be found on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, and YouTube. Today we pray peace and grace to you through our Lord Jesus Christ and happy ministering.